Hello, I'm Dan Restuccio with Post Perspective and welcome to NAB 2018 here in beautiful Las Vegas. I'm here with Larry Thorpe from Canon, living legend Larry Thorpe. We're going to embarrass him a little bit. We know each other a long time, Sony and stuff like that. You're here with Canon. Yes, I am. Tell me this exciting new thing. Why is the C700 FF an amazing camera? Why is it? There's so many cameras here. Give me the reasons it's one of the best cameras going out there right well, now. Well, a lot of excitement around full frame. There's four to five full frame cameras, and we've joined that club because that's where a lot of the action is, a lot of the interest is. We developed our own full frame sensor, and it has the same image circle as your traditional DSLR full frame, 43.2 millimeter, but we made the aspect ratio cinema, 17 by nine. So it's actually wider than full frame, great for panoramic shots. Mm. Very high resolution, 5.9K, so you can record that raw where the codex plugs into our camera. But probably more importantly, you can record it internally. We do a very novel down sampling from 5.9K red, green, blue down to 4K. And we do that in a manner where we get higher MTF from the 5.9K protect that into the domain of the 4K, and then remove aliasing and average noise. So you end up with a very sharp 4K, clean, clean picture, even at high ISOs. And you record that on board on CFAST cards as ProRes or our XF AVC. So it's an intriguing camera. So I'm looking at this camera now. Most people are looking, they're saying they're going, looking at Alexa, I'm looking at a red. Why am I going to come to your camera? I think you come to our camera because uh, with our Cinema EOS, we've been out there six years now, we have established a global reputation on spectacular picture quality. We know how to do skin tones just superbly. Uh, the, I think the very high resolution of this, the, the reputation we've established with the Cinema line of the last three or four years, people know that we're now into the serious A camera level. And I think what I just described in the recording is it distinguishes from the others. We do that, nobody else does that. We give you a spectacular 4K. Now one of the ways you do this is you have these new lenses. Amazing, yes. a CNE 20 millimeter, 1.5, amazingly fast That's lens. That's a very fast lens. That's a beautiful lens. That so allows you to do all sorts of things, of course, shoot low light, but also you can play uh, with the aperture wide open. You can get uh, wonderful bokehs at low ISOs. Oh. Uh, I mean, it just gives, New degrees of freedom to the cinematographer. And you have a whole new line of 4K UHD cameras, HDR reference displays. Yes. Let's talk about the cameras a little bit. Okay, well, not uh, the cameras, no, it's, uh, it's new lenses. Oh, the new lenses, Yeah. my bad. Yeah, we, we've uh, a whole range, uh, six new lenses. Okay. All 4K, all two-third inch for the broadcast industry. We've got a new 66 zoom lens, 66 by, with the very latest in image stabilization. That's targeting houses of worship, sports venues that are smaller, tennis courts, uh, basketball, etc. Uh, home shopping type shooting. Very important lens to our portfolio, and it's 4K, and it has image stabilization. The latest and greatest is in image stabilization. So, very important lens. Then we have six portables, two are 45 times zooms. 4K, built-in image stabilization. Perfect for wildlife, documentary work, and we kept the size exactly the same as the HD versions of 15 years ago. So that they're very important. Then we brought out three cost-effective 4K lenses, recognizing that there now is a lot of lower-cost 4K cameras in the two-third inch domain, and we felt we have to have lenses commensurate with those. So these lenses will come in about the price point of existing HD lenses. So we greatly broadened our portfolio of lenses, recognizing that the industry is marching slowly to 4K, but they're looking at 1080p with HDR. All these lenses have HDR and wide color gamut uh, specifications in. Can you do really quickly, can you tell me about the 4K HDR reference displays? Are we at yes. Rec 2020 yet? Uh, not on not display itself, no, nobody is. Uh, that, uh, there's no direct view display gotcha. that can do 2020, so we all, a, a gamut map to the best of what our display can do. Our display goes beyond P3, so it's a pretty decent wide color gamut, and we map to that. But in terms of um, 
uh, our, our cameras will originate in 2020. We can give you 2020 in the cameras. Uh, of course, you have to play with that in post-production uh, to get whatever it is that you want from that wide color gamut. Uh, the, but the reference displays, what's very important with the two that we brought out here, is a 24 inch and a 17 inch. That's rack mountable, battery operatable. Uh, both of them have tremendous tools for HDR uh, grading and, and shooting uh, on set. We have waveform monitors built in that can scale to whatever it is, PQ, hybrid log gammas, the different brightness levels. We have color metering that uh, it superimpose colors on your scene, your live scene, and tell you that that guy is about 5,000 nits, you better get rid of it because you can't deal with it. Or if you can, then go for it. And different colors tell you the different brightness levels, reflections off cars, etc. Et so very important tools and a beautiful little joystick that if you're looking at a highlight, you just move that joystick and we will read the nits, the, the candelas per square meter of that particular highlight in, in anywhere in the scene. And these are all important tools. Well, thank you very much, Larry. <laughs> We're here. Thank you very much. If My somebody pleasure. wants more information, canon.com? Canon.com. Canon.com. Thank you very much. So again, Dan Restuccio, Post Perspective here at NEB 2018 with Larry Thor Thorpe. It's Thank been an much. honor and a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.